What is it about the arts that make them so relatable to us? I think when we look at an artist's work, what we're seeing is a representation of an ability we all share. And that's our ability to create. An artist takes thought and translates that into something tangible. And in that, we can see a piece of ourselves, along with the artist's ability to realize their full potential. And this has the power to inspire and bring people together. As an artist, I was used to working on projects alone. But as a musician, I was constantly collaborating, and this pushed me to ask the question, what would happen if we got a group of people together and had them work collaboratively on a painting? So with the help of some local artists and musicians, we decided to open up my basement and give it a shot. The initial idea was to approach uh, painting the same way musicians approach a jam session. As musicians improvise, they communicate with each other through the music. And this generates a supportive and inspirational atmosphere which perpetuates the motion of the jam. And this is something we thought we'd be able to accomplish in the visual arts. So we set up a large-scale canvas that was big enough for several artists to work on, along with an area close by for musicians to jam. And this way, as the artists were painting, they'd be able to see the interaction between the musicians and have that influence their work. And then in turn, the musicians could see the artist's work and have that influence them, creating this exchange of energy which we were calling a creative vortex. When I looked up the definition of what a vortex is, I came across the Cambridge Dictionary definition, which described it as a mass of air or water that spins, pulling objects towards its empty center. In a creative vortex, we would be pulling inspirational ideas towards our collective center, and this would push us to generate something larger than any one of us could come up with on our own. That first night, it didn't take a lot to get things started. As the musicians started playing, one of the artists, a woman named Michelle, got up, and she started to paint, and she encouraged the rest of us to join her. As each one of us stepped up to collaborate, the lines of communication opened right up. We were sharing our ideas, our styles, and our techniques. We came up with a rule that night that may seem kind of scary or counterintuitive, but really set the tone for the entire experience, and that was everything was fair game to be painted on or over. This really allowed ego to be out of the equation and also let everything that was inspiring us just come out. The best way to describe how this works is when you look at the clouds and you pick out familiar objects. We would look through the layers of paint at the textures in the canvas and we'd be able to see things that we could outline and create into something completely different. That first night when we wrapped everything up, we all took a step back to see what we had created. And what we saw was a morphing of all of our styles into something that had completely stood on its own. And this made the entire experience really interesting and exciting to be a part of. The one thing that really stood out about that night was the sense of positivity we generated throughout that night, and it was a feeling that carried through the entire next week. Through this bonding experience, we created a community that was uh, in an area of our life that typically we faced alone. These moments where we were supporting each other, we were validating each other, and this is something I think we can all use from time to time. We started turning this into more of a regular event in the basement. It never mattered how many people showed up or who was there to collaborate. That same sense of positivity always came up, and this was having an effect on all of us. For me, I was able to see how art was bringing people together and the effect it was having on us, and this inspired me to keep generating these kind of projects. We started posting what we were doing online through social media, and it wasn't long before we outgrew the basement. We started setting up our projects in different locations like classrooms, clubs, festivals, warehouses, and anywhere that was welcoming what we were doing. The one thing uh, about when I first started the, the, all of this was that I had no idea how things were gonna go. I mean, when you're working in your basement with a group of friends that happen to be artists and musicians, it's not hard to kind of figure out how things are gonna turn out. But now we were opening up this experience to anybody in places we'd never been, and what if this was a complete failure? But it wasn't. Everywhere we do one of these events, people come right up to us and they ask what we're doing. We explain that these are interactive events that everyone is welcome to come join through collaborative painting, and most people give it a shot. Time and time again, we witness amazing things happen on the canvas by people that are connecting and developing relationships. And the amazing part for us is when we set these projects up, we're there to inspire and reach out to people. But more times than not, we're the ones that walk away feeling inspired. We did an event with the Spirit of Huntington Art Center, which uses creativity to work with veterans and children that are on the spectrum. This is our first time ever using our project to work with children, so we didn't know how we were gonna be received, but I remember when we set up the project, the kids hit us with this sense of excitement that almost knocked us over. 
once we had everything in place, these kids hit that canvas with a sense of enthusiasm that was so heartwarming. There was this one moment in the day where all the kids got into this collective concentration. Everything got super quiet, and all you could hear were the sound of the brushes on the canvas. And it dawned on me in that moment that nobody had to tell these kids what to do. They just knew, and that was an amazing revelation. St. Charles Hospital asked us to work with patients who had suffered from traumatic brain injuries. Here we didn't want to overstimulate the patients, so what we did was work on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis. As the staff would bring each patient out, we'd ask them if they wanted to paint, and you could see them working through the difficulties to engage. And some of these people had a real long road to recovery ahead of them, but once we got that paintbrush in their hand, you could see something happening inside as they would light up. We did get to utilize our group dynamic that day as we worked with the family members of the patients that came in throughout the day. This is the first time we used what we were doing therapeutically, and it's an avenue we're going to continue to explore. We had a project called Creative Unity, which we were setting up all over the island, and a teacher from the Longwood School District named Molly Teneinhaus heard about what we were doing and asked if we would be willing to use this project to work with our students. Molly t uh, the children Molly works with are typically the ones that are overlooked. These are children with severe learning disabilities, English as a second language, and behavioral issues. I was just talking to Molly about that day, and the way she describes it still gives me the chills. She described it as each category of, of child throughout the day evolved, culminating into a beautiful expression of humanity. As these children were creating together, they were bonding, and they were generating that same sense of positivity that we found in the basement when we first started all this. We were so moved by the way the children interacted with our project that we donated this to the Longwood School District, where it now is a permanent home. While I was preparing for this talk today, I was looking for a way to describe why what we do works. And I came across an article that was written in the HuffPost back in 2016 by Priscilla Frank uh, that details a few points that I think are pretty relevant. Uh, what caught my eye was the title of this article, which said, study says making art reduces stress, even if you kind of suck at it. <laughs> so this article details a uh, study that was conducted by Dr. Karija Kaimal of the PhD program in creative art therapies at Drexel University and was co-authored by a doctoral student named Kendra Ray. They invited 39 adults between the ages of 18 and 59 to participate. Each one was given access to markers, paper, clay, and materials to collage with, and they were told they can create anything they wanted within a 45-minute period of time. And what they found was that 75% of the participants experienced a significant reduction in cortisol, which is our stress hormone. And I think this helps explain why that sense of positivity always comes up when we do our events. Another uh, thing that Dr. Kru Kaimal explained in the article is that at the core of art therapy is the idea that each one of us is creative and when we're put in the right environment we have the ability to express ourselves through the visual arts and that's exactly what we're all about. In these divided times it is so important to have activities that can bring us together and creativity is a great subject to work with. Every decision we make is an act of creativity and when we push that ability to its fullest extent that's when we can change everything. Is setting up group projects based on collaborative painting going to solve all our problems? Well, anything that can inspire and bring people together is a step in the right direction. If you haven't had a chance, please come to our workshop where you can explore the Creative Vortex experience for yourself. Thank you.